I'm with Janie Hames from CMJ UK. Now, Janie, what is CMJ UK? Um, we are the church's ministry among Jewish people, founded in 1809. And our original name in those days was the Society for Promoting Christianity Among the Jews. Uh, but we now know as C- uh, CMJ. And what's your mission to the Jewish people? Um, basically to share our faith with them with um, about uh, their Jewish Messiah. That, that's our bottom line really and that's done in um, many different ways, creative ways. Um, over the years it began with um, health education um, and work welfare and all that sort of thing um, in, in the 1800s when we first began. But of course these days there's not a lot we can teach them about health care and education because they do it so well. Um, so in Israel for instance we have guest houses, coffee shops, bookshops. Um, We have heritage centres and Jewish people are very interested in the history of their own land and CMJ have been there for so long that we can actually provide them with some of that history. So our centres are places where people will come, um, maybe a couple of thousand in a week, particularly to our um, centre in um, the old city at Christchurch uh, where there's a lot of artefacts and it's very attractive to Jewish people. So in a sensitive way, we can share our faith through the history of why Christians went there in the first place to a, a so-called God-forsaken land. Is it easy to evangelise Jewish people? Um, well, I suppose it depends how you do that, really. Um, we we don't like the confrontational way. My pr- preferred way, uh, and I think the way CMJ like to do it, is through... Um, sensitive ways through building relationships and not just building relationships so that um, so that we can convert them but um, through a genuine love um, for them that God has given to us um, because we do love them because of um, through them came the scriptures the, pro- the prophecies um, you know the things that we hold dear and of course the the Messiah so um, you know God has given CMJ a mandate and a great love for the Jewish people and so the way we do the evangelism is sensitive um, it's not confrontational and as I say it's through um, relation relational a lot of the time um some of uh, another way we can do um evangelism among jewish people is to go to places where we know they are i.e um new age fairs and festivals particularly in london mm. and also um people in israel will know about bumba mm. and that sort of an uh, event and we will go to those places and we can connect there and talk um about spiritual matters mm. and, and um offer them a Jesus or a Yeshua experience. Mm. Now you're involved in education. Does the church understand Israel? Um, um, I don't want to be sounding arrogant, but I think maybe on the whole, no. Um, there's a, an ignorance uh, regarding the Jewish roots of our faith. And um, we travel around to a lot of churches and um, unfortunately we, we um, hear passages of scripture specifically talking about Israel, but then is um, spiritualized and translated into uh, pl- promises and blessings for the church and, and excluding um, uh, or ignoring the fact that actually God was speaking specifically to Israel uh, about such things. So we do see that. Um, so that's part of our mandate also is to bring um, a, an education, um, educating Christians about the Jewish roots of our faith. Again, in a sensitive way, you know, we, we're not arrogant. We can't be arrogant about this. Um, but it's something very, very important. Um, and we believe it, it leads to an understanding, a more of an understanding about the Middle East, the current situation in the Middle East, you know, regarding... Um, Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan, Syria. Um, These are all mentioned in Isaiah 19 in the highway passages. Um, And I think having an understanding of um, the Jewish roots of our faith really helps us to get a more of a grasp on what is going on in the Middle East. And um, interesting, lots of Arab people I know and, and many Iranians coming to faith these days when they, they come to faith and then they're taught the truth about the Jewish roots of the faith and who, Jesus the Messiah is Jewish, and they, they have these things taught to them, they all of a sudden have a wonderful revelation that the, it, all of a sudden the Middle East makes a whole lot more sense because um, God has a plan for it and it doesn't seem crazy anymore, but it's, um, you know, the, obviously it's an area of conflict, but it, it does make more sense for them. Mm. 
Now, you also believe in reconciliation between Arab and Jews as well, don't you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yes. And you see that particularly um, in our centres in Israel. We have five or six centres, and in all of them, we have Arab and Jewish staff working together. They're all believers in Jesus, and it's a wonderful picture of the one new man in action happening, and it's not really something they have to work at. And what we find is when Jewish and um, Arab people or, or anybody for that matter, when they come to faith in Jesus, um, this, um, the wall of hostility is broken down as you know, spoken about in Ephesians and they recognise each other as brothers in, in the Messiah. They see the bigger plan that God has for not only that region but the rest of the world and, and you see this beautiful picture of reconciliation and that in itself is... Um, a, a wonderful testimony to people on the outside. So, uh, again, for instance, at Christchurch, um, um, as I said earlier, a couple of thousand people might be um, turn up during a week to look at artifacts and have a cup of coffee and a lovely piece of cake, and they will be served by Jewish and Arab staff who are working together and having fun together. And it's a wonderful um, testimony to... Um, what God has done for them and so often uh, and when I was living there often people would say how can this be you know how come these people who under ordinary circumstances hate each other and yet here they are working side by side in the kitchens cleaning rooms you know serving cleaning tables how can this be and so it gives us a wonderful opportunity to explain how it is um, and then there you have an open door for the gospel mm. it brings a tear to your eye <laughs> why did you get involved personally um, when I um, first became a believer around um, 30 years ago, a young woman, um, I, I, I was fortunate enough to go to a church where these things were taught, the Jewish roots of our faith were taught, and, um, and I saw it for myself as I read the scriptures. And um, I live in a city that has a, a good-sized Jewish population. And just really, um, I have to say that God put a love into my heart for the people. And, and I, I've always been, um, since those early days, I've been um, really um, intrigued and uh, very stimulated reading about the Jewish roots of the faith in a very personal way. And, and I think my family does have Jewish heritage, so that sort of made it um, much more interesting for me. Um, and in those early days when my children were young, um, my husband was working full time and we needed some extra income, so I applied for a job and ended up working for a Jewish lady cleaning her home. And um, just having conversations with her and um, find. Uh, and being invited along to um, you know, social events at the synagogue with the ladies and just developed um, a real love for them, a genuine love for them. And it wasn't um, just because I wanted to you know, be able to say, oh, they're all getting saved and you know, these Jewish people are coming to faith, but a genuine love for them. And, and actually, there's so much that we can learn from them. They, they know their Bibles very, very well, and there's so much that we can learn from them. So that, that's how it began for me. I didn't decide to do it. It was something that uh, the Lord planted in me, uh, and I, I just love it, and I'm glad he did it. <laughs> so is God doing something today in Israel? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, all the time we're hearing uh, wonderful stories um, of um, work among the Jewish people and, and also, as I was saying earlier, among the Arab people too. CMJ's mandate, um, it comes from Romans, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, it's the power of God to salvation to those who believe, to the Jews first and then the Gentiles. Um, so we take our mandate from that. So um, we are an organisation that wants to bring gospel to Jewish people, but also to the Arab peoples or anybody else who uh, that comes across our path. So, um, yeah, God is most certainly at work among the Jewish people. And um, again, on the compound in Christchurch, Jerusalem, and if you're ever there, please go. You will love it. Uh, everybody meets up there. Um, so we, uh, for instance, we have... Um, um, born again uh, messianic Jewish tour guides working in the center so they will have large tour groups they could even be Israeli school groups we have groups of Muslims that come around and they tell the history of the site it's opposite um, the David Citadel which was Harriet's palace so they, they tell the history of the site and 
cleverly wrapped up in the telling of the history is the gospel because they're explaining why Jewish, um, sorry, why Christians came there uh, a couple of hundred years ago in a so-called God-forsaken land. And so in the telling, um, afterwards, people will put their hands up and say, can you just, um, so are you Jewish? Do you believe in Jesus? How can this be? You know, Jewish people don't believe in Jesus. So the, our guides will get an opportunity to share their faith like that to whole groups. And often they're military groups, you know, the IDF come through or the R, not the IAF and so on. So there's there's opportunities going on the whole time and God regularly surprises us with amazing things um, at Christmas time um, it's a phenomenal event every Christmas and um, Christ Church opens its doors and from around four in the afternoon until well past midnight maybe one in the morning on Christmas Eve we have a rolling carol service um, so the carol service runs for an hour um, everybody has a break, a cup of tea or something, and they run the service again. And Jewish people come literally in their thousands, three, four, five, six thousand people will come during those few hours to partake of a carol service. So, um, and um, over the years, we've had um, the, the local radio station, Gal Galatz, have been along and interviewed people. And, and in one particular case, they said to one young man, also, oh, you, uh, you've come here as a volunteer. Can you tell us? what it's like for you as a Christian to um, to be celebrating Christmas here in, in Jerusalem, you know, this wonderful city. So he said, well, I will tell you as a Jewish believer in Jesus what it's like celebrating the birth of Messiah in, in Jerusalem. And they were quite shocked because they assumed that everybody there was um, were Western Christians, but obviously we're not. So this young man was able to give his testimony as a Jewish believer and made the links with the feast of um, Hanukkah, you mm. know, the festival of light. Um, and, and this went out over the Galgalatz radio, which uh, is the IDF official radio station. <laughs> and, and I've had an opportunity uh, myself to do that. So, um, you know, sometimes you know, when you're working out there, you go to bed at night amazed and surprised with a big smile on your face, thinking, wow, God did some amazing things here today. And some of the staff out there have regular meetings with um, quite high-ranking officials within the Israeli government and the military, mm. speaking, talking with them uh, about spiritual matters, because obviously the land is in an intense situation and people are um, looking for answers. Mm. You know, what is going on? What, do you, what is our God doing? Mm. Um, so we get um, marvelous opportunities to witness. Wow. Mm. Uh, so what's your prayer for the Jewish people and the Palestinian people? Ooh. Oh, wow, obviously, um, it would be um, for peace, you know, um, a lack of bloodshed for, for the workers out there in the land to be effective, you know, that they would um, live out their Christian lives in a way that is, um, that peace, but that people, um, they, they find that an enviable way of life and would, would want to have that for themselves, it says in Romans, you know, to, to have people wanting what we've got. Um, and for all of our ministries, not just CMJ, but all the ministries to, to be really effective. Um, yeah, I, I, the, our politicians are constantly coming up with ideas for peace, roadmaps to peace, and, you know, the Israelis give away parcels of land to... Um, to try and achieve peace, but um, it's the, we've found the only real peace happens when the Prince of Peace comes in mm. into people's hearts and said, "That's that's our prayer," um, and that obviously people come to faith, um, and that's when it begins. That's when the peace begins. Um, yeah, it, it's a privilege to be part of the work, um, and um, yeah, we just sorry. And you have a website for people who'd like to know more. What's your website address? It's www.cmj.org.uk. Okay, Janie, thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for the opportunity to, to share about our ministry. Yeah, thank you so much.